Hi, my name is Eddie Kramer and we're here in the wonderful La Fabrique studios in saint rémy de provence It is April and the weather's beautiful and we're with Mix with the Masters and it is absolutely fantastic. We've got some questions from folks who've been reading Sound on Sound and the first question is from a gentleman by the name of Harry Burden. How many guitars are there tracked on Little Wing? Also, how come Hendrix liked to end most of his songs with a fade out instead of an ending. Uh, as far as Little Wing is concerned, since we only had four tracks, we were pretty limited. And Jimmy's major talent was being able to play lead and rhythm at the same time, which constitutes the original rhythm track. There was a secondary guitar track that was done to support the solo, which was a separate punch in. As far as the endings are concerned, well, uh, I guess the song kind of just stumbled to an end and we said, well, we better fade it out before you, you can hear what's happening. <laughs> so it was gradually faded. A lot of his songs were faded out because they never really finished putting the endings together, which they did for the stage. Mariana hutten Kzapski, that's a mouthful. Hi Eddie, myself and another two young engineers are developing our own studio after paying our dues in interning. Well, that's a good place to pay your dues. What skill or characteristic would distinguish yourself from the thousands of other studios and recording engineers out there today? Uh, and in other words, what special flavor do you think is lacking in the industry and the engineers and producers should be targeting to stand out from the rest? That's a hell of a lot of questioning. I'll try to attack it one at a time. Um, in terms of a, of a skill and a characteristic that would distinguish yourself from the thousands of others, I would suggest um, possibly giving yourself a really good shot at becoming an engineer producer who loves analog and can work in the analog world and the digital world. That would really make you stand out because so many folks out there are using you know, their laptops and their Pro Tools in whatever format and they're all working in the box. Uh, to be able to work outside of the box and in the box would give you a little bit more edge and that would be my advice. As far as the thing, that special flavor that's lacking, it's all of that and more. Next question. Noah Carr or Kerr. At any point in your engineering career have you ever made a radical alteration to your work habits or techniques in the studio? If so, how does that decision shape your recollections of prior work? A very pointed and very interesting question. I would say probably the most radical uh, work habit alteration that I did was very early 67 when I found that the abundant use of smoking the famous green herb uh, was definitely affecting my judgment. Uh, I wasn't doing that, although I, on one or two occasions I did and I found myself completely out of it on the board and I had to walk around outside and wake myself up basically and I swore never ever to do that again. I was working with traffic and they had a tendency to smoke an awful lot and there was this huge pall of smoke in the control room since air conditioning was not an option. Um, mm. And after I had partaken, so to speak, uh, that was it. I collapsed on the board and I, I, I just said after that, you know, I need to be in control. There has to be one sane human being in the control room and that's me. And that was my work ethic that altered. C.A. Robinson, must be from America with that kind of initialing. Do you experience anxiety when working with new artists? Has contributing to the success of so many great bands given you full confidence and clarity with what you need to accomplish? I don't think I get anxiety ridden with when working with new artists. I get more excited. I feel that the excitement of working with someone new and creating something new, that's really important. That gets me going. Uh, getting to work every day, working on music uh, that I love and enjoy, that gets me excited. Um, anxiety? No. I think the anxiety probably comes from other oh, guys gonna make it here today. <laughs> um, 
you know, are the, the session musicians that we booked, are they going to show up because there was a strike or something? You know, that, that kind of thing. But the actual working with the artists, no, that's a joy, that's a pleasure. Um, I want to make it exciting for the artists, and hopefully the artist is going to be as excited as I am. So uh, I guess from uh, a, a lifetime of experience working with great artists, I've been very fortunate uh, to have worked with, um, I do feel confident about what I do and what I can bring to the table. Thank you. Ian Simmons, or Simons, uh, what was the exact signal path and how was the main lean guitar achieved on all along the watchtower? Guitar, amp pedals, mic compressor, EQ desk, etc. Well, Mr. Simons, you're asking a very extended set of pertinent questions. Um, the exact signal path has been lost to mankind which is fortunate, so we now have to guess. Uh, all I can say is that Mr. Hendricks, in his inimitable style, would plug in his guitar with a couple of pedals, um, proceed to play, adjust the volume, get the distortion that he wanted because he was very adept at doing so. Um, from there, into the console, um, mm. into a mic pre with some EQ and maybe a little touch of compression and some reverb, and. Bob's your uncle and Fanny's your aunt, mate. I have no bloody clue. Adrian Krebs, what have been your favorite pieces of outboard gear to process guitars with early in your career and today? Did working with legendary guitarists like Page and Hendrix influence the fundamental techniques you use to track and process any guitars in a given session? Favorite pieces of gear for processing? Well, I love using the 1176 compressor on the bus of the mix of the two guitar tracks that I'm putting together. And those tracks have been assembled from many different microphones or sometimes just one microphone. But the 1176 rules, as far as I'm concerned, for general compression. As far as EQ and mic prees, it's a Neve. Uh, 1081 because it's four band EQ, or it could be a 1083, um, it could be an, oh, an API, it could be any number of mic pre's, but I do love my 1081 Neves. That's for the EQ. Um, and I, as much as I loved the Helios console in the early 60s from Olympic, uh, it's virtually impossible to find an original one of those. Um, so the Waves plugin is a pretty darn good substitute. Um, certainly working with Page and Hendrix, their work ethic and their concept of how they get their guitar sound initially in the studio certainly sets me up because the sound that they're getting in the studio is so damn good, it makes it very simple for me to just put a mic in the right place open up the faders and the sound is pretty much there. David Dobbs, what advice would you give recording and mixing a great drum sound with two microphones? Thank you. I would suggest using uh, either a pair of U67 tube mics, a pair of U47 tube mics. Um, some people like C12s, the old vintage ones, they're quite nice, they're a bit high-endy. But I prefer, if I was going to do just two mics, I'd use two, 40, do two U47s, the tubes. Um, you could either do one mic on above the kit and, say, put the other 47 about two feet away from the bass drum. You get a pretty nice mono drum sound. Or if you want to just go stereo, put them above, get the right angles, uh, probably two, three feet above the, the kit, and away you go. Sergio Gutierrez, what is your process in mixing a vocal track? What processing and effects you use for it? Well, if the vocal has been recorded already um, using either a 67 or a SM7 or whatever microphone you're going to use, and it's got the correct amount of EQ and it's been compressed either with an LA-2A or an 1176 or a combo of both, um, in the mixing process, um, I always like to have a duplicate of that vocal track right next to the original so that I can crush that one to give some grit if necessary, if it's a rock track. Um, you know, finding the right level for a vocal in a 
mixing situation is what is the song dictating? Is it a rock song where you want the vocals slightly buried and people have to kind of strain to know what the artist is singing about? Or is it a pop rock thing where the vocal is now going to be much more forward? This is a decision only you will know what to do. Last question, Mark Gallagher. What was your biggest mistake in your career and why do you think that happened? The biggest mistake I think I ever made was when I was mixing Led Zeppelin to the album. And there's a song I believe called, uh, let me think now, Whole Lot of Something. Anyway, in the middle break there are apparently two vocals. So Robert Plant's voice screaming up by himself, woman, and then there's this other little voice that one hears in the background that's also Robert going woman in the background. Um, during the mixing process, um, Mr. Page and I were looking at each other sideways as we could not get rid of that other little voice. And at the precise moment that that voice came up again, we looked at each other again and started laughing. We both put reverb on that funky little voice and that was literally a mistake. It wasn't supposed to be there, but because we capitalized on the mistake and putting reverb on, that's become part of Zeppelin's history and part of rock music history. So the idea here is, and the concept is, keep the damn mistakes in. So thank you very much all of the participants who have asked questions from Sound on Sound. Great magazine. I've been reading it for years. And uh, keep up the bloody good work. Uh, nice questions. I'd like to do this again sometime. Many thanks. Now to what we've been up to this last week uh, with the well-attended uh, seminar here at La Fabrique with Mixed with the Masters. Great bunch of guys, 15 of them, and the questions have been amazing. The quality of the work that they have presented is tremendous, very high level, very musical, very challenging, which is great. I've learned a lot, and I know that they've learned a lot. And I just cannot wait to come back to Mix with the Masters again, hopefully soon, at La Fabrique. Fantastic place. And uh, see you all soon. <laughs>